Hello, I'm Ranger Emily and I'm a park ranger at Manhattan Project National Historical Park. Today it is my privilege to share the story of Sadako Sasaki, a young Japanese girl who witnessed the atomic bombing of Hiroshima, Japan, and inspired generations with her origami cranes in Message of Peace. To understand Sadako's story, we must first learn about World War II and the events that led to Sadako holding 1,000 origami cranes. World War II began in 1939 when Germany invaded Poland. Soon countries around the world were fighting in the greatest war the world has ever seen. There were two main groups of countries that fought in World War II, the Allied Powers and the Axis Powers. The United States was an Allied Power and Japan an Axis Power. By 1940, Japan was expanding its empire by invading countries in East Asia. The United States responded to Japan's expansion by stopping the sale of American resources to Japan. The U.S. was Japan's main supplier for iron, steel, and oil, and the U.S. embargo slowed the flow of military supplies to Japan. The U.S. also demanded Japan remove its military forces from China and Indochina. That same year, Japan formed an alliance with Germany and Italy by signing the Tripartite Pact. The world was now divided between Allied powers and Axis powers. And on December 7, 1941, Japan took military action against the United States by bombing Pearl Harbor Navy Base in Hawaii. The following day, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the United States Congress officially joined the Allied powers and declared war on Japan and the Axis powers. World War II in Europe ended when Germany surrendered to the Allied powers on May 2, 1945. But Germany's ally, Japan, did not surrender and World War II continued in the Pacific. Harry S. Truman, now the United States President, gave the order for the military to drop Little Boy, an atomic bomb, over the city of Hiroshima, Japan. After the bombing of Hiroshima on August 6, President Truman demanded Japan's full surrender. Japan did not surrender, and on August 9, the United States dropped a second atomic bomb, named Fat Man, over the city of Nagasaki. The result of the bombings was tens of thousands of lives lost and many more injured. On September 2, 1945, Emperor Hirohito and the Japanese government surrendered to the Allied powers and World War II came to an end. Sadako Sasaki was two years old when Paul Tibbet of the United States Air Force flew his B-29 bomber airplane over the city of Hiroshima. Unlike the many other B-29 bombers that had flown over Hiroshima the past days and weeks, Tibbet's bomber, the Enola Gay, was much different than previous B-29 bombers. The Enola Gay carried Little Boy atomic bomb. By order of President Truman, Tibbet and his crew dropped one of the most powerful bombs ever created over the city of Hiroshima in a population of approximately 350,000 people. The bomb destroyed nearly five square miles of Hiroshima. Sadako and family lived a little over one mile from the bomb's hypocenter. A blinding white light flashed through the city and a huge boom was heard miles away when Little Boy exploded over Sadako's hometown. Immediately, fires broke out all over the city and radioactive black rain began to fall from the sky. Sadako, with her mother and brother, escaped the fires. Sadako's grandmother was leaving with Sadako and her family when she turned back to retrieve some family heirlooms from their home and was never seen again. Shigeo, Sadako's father, was not in Hiroshima at the time, Shigeo reunited with his family after the bombing, and the Sasaki family returned to Hiroshima to rebuild their lives. Like many others living in Hiroshima following World War II, the Sasaki family struggled with sickness, financial hardship, food scarcity, and the uncertainty of their family's future. They mourned the loss of their grandmother, neighbors, and their home. The Sasaki family would also grieve for Sadako when she became sick with atomic bomb disease. People in Hiroshima called the cancer that emerged in adults and children soon after World War II atomic bomb disease because the cancer was likely caused by the atomic bomb. Many children like Sadako developed cancer years after the bomb was dropped over Hiroshima. Doctors diagnosed Sadako with leukemia, a type of cancer which was likely caused by the radioactive black rain that fell on Sadako and Hiroshima on the day of the bombing. By all appearances, Sadako was a happy and healthy child. She was known as a fast runner and popular with her classmates. That is why it came as such a surprise when at the age of 12, Sadako began to show symptoms of leukemia 
and had to be admitted into the hospital. While in the hospital, Sadako remained optimistic and resilient. Even though Sadako was sick, she continued to bring happiness and cheer to her family and friends. Sadako was very happy the day the Red Cross Youth Club gave Sadako and the other children staying at the hospital origami cranes. Origami cranes were thought to help people who were sick become well again. Sadako was visiting with her father, Shigeo, at the hospital when she asked him, Why did they send us origami cranes, father? Shigeo answered Sadako's question by telling her the Japanese legend of the crane. Japanese folklore says that a crane can live for a thousand years, and a person who folds an origami crane for each year of a crane's life will have their wish granted. The story of the origami cranes inspired Sadako. She had a new passion and purpose to have her wish to be well again, granted by folding 1,000 origami cranes. Sadako's room soon filled with hundreds of colorful origami cranes of all different sizes. After folding her thousandth crane, Sadako made her wish to be well again. Sadly, Sadako's wish did not come true. She remained ill, but did not lose her faith in origami cranes. Sadako began folding more cranes for a new wish, for her father's debt to be forgiven. Sadako continued to fold cranes, some as small as a grain of rice, until her last moments. Surrounded by family, with over a thousand origami cranes in her room, Sadako passed away at the age of 12. When Sadako first realized how sick she was, she had many thoughts and questions. She worried about her family and if people would remember her. Sadako asked herself, how can I make the world a better place while I'm still alive? She wanted to leave the world a more peaceful place, and she shared those thoughts and feelings with her friends and family. Though Sadako did not know her impact on the world when she died, Sadako did make the world a better place. Sadako's resilient spirit and origami cranes inspired her friends and classmates to raise money for a monument for Sadako and the children who died as a result of atomic bombs. Since 1958, thousands have visited the statue of Sadako in Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park. Sadako's figure lifts a large paper crane overhead. Inscribed at the foot of Sadako's statue is a plaque that reads, This is our cry, this is our prayer, peace in the world. Sadako's statues and other memorials serve as reminders and can be seen throughout Hiroshima today. Here in the United States, the American people and the National Park Service have created memorials and sites of remembrance for World War II, including Manhattan Project National Historical Park, Manzanar National Historic Site, and Minidoka National Historic Site. In 2012, the Sadako Legacy Foundation of Japan donated one of Sadako's cranes to the National Park Service. Sadako's crane is featured in an exhibit at the USS Arizona Memorial at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Sadako's brother Masahiro now spends his time spreading Sadako's message of peace. Masahiro said, Commonly in Japan, the crane is regarded as a symbol of peace. But for us, in the Sasaki family, it is the embodiment of Sadako's life, and it is filled with her wish and hope. I hope by talking about the small wish for hope, the small ripple will become bigger and bigger. Masahiro promotes the value of omo iari no koko ro, a compassionate and sympathetic heart. He believes that having a compassionate and sympathetic heart is essential for creating peace in the world. In many ways, Sadako was an ordinary girl, yet she did something truly extraordinary. She inspired generations of people to share messages of peace. There may be times that you feel ordinary, but think of all the extraordinary changes you can make in the world by simply having an omo iari no koko ro, a compassionate and sympathetic heart. Thank you for joining me for our talk about Sadako Sasaki. I hope the story of Sadako inspires you to share a message of peace.